Welcome to Whiskey's The Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano. Today's video, we're going to do part two of my series on the top five best whiskeys to be drinking. If you have been following the series, you know that I started out with bourbons, then I went to scotch, then Irish, and then weeded bourbons. And now I am on to round two. And this time I'm going to be covering my top five 100 proof bourbons for beginners. And if you haven't been following my series, and this is the first time here, this is basically what's happening. I've got a group of friends that are just getting into bourbon. They know that I'm now the whiskey guy, so they're coming up to me and saying, hey, have you heard about this? What would you suggest here? What do you think of this whiskey? Do you like scotch? Do you like Irish? Do you like bourbon? What, what's going on in this whole thing? So I told them, hey, why don't you guys come on over? Somebody bring the food. I'll supply the bourbon. I'll supply the whiskey, and we'll go ahead and have a good night, and we'll talk about the stuff. And in order to do this, I have some criteria that I need to follow. First of all, this all has to come from my own personal collection, and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. In this bourbon part two, they all have to be 100 proof. I'm gonna to try to keep the bottles under $60, and nothing here should be allocated. These will be shelf whiskeys that if you go into a Total Wine, a BevMo, whatever your local liquor store is, you should see them. And I understand that every market is different. I just have to go by what Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona has to offer. There's gonna be a selection of five. And then at the very end of the night, you don't want to just leave everybody hanging and say, see you later, have fun with those five. You wanna end the night with something special, a sixth bottle that's going to get them to look forward to what is the next step in bourbon or the next step in whiskey. I hope that's enough information for you guys to understand basically what my whole series is all about. So let's go ahead and get to the top five 100 proof bourbons for beginners. No particular order. Well, actually, there is a particular order. I have these in price order from the least expensive to the most expensive. And my least expensive bottle on the list is going to be Evan Williams Bottled and Bond. Evan Williams Bottled and Bond is charcoal finished. It's coming from a genuine sour mash. The mash bill on this is 78% corn, 12% malt, and 10% rye. It's distilled at Heaven Hill Distillery and it's bottled in Bardstown, Kentucky. And some of your talking points here for this, for your group would be, what does bottled and bond mean? This is aged at least four years based on the Bottled and Bond Act. And there's a lot more information here, but I'm not going over that. I'm just here to let you know the top five bourbons that are 100 proof. You hear everybody talking about classic bourbon notes, and this definitely meets that statement. It is classic caramel, brown sugar, honey, you get some sweetness in here. I get a little bit of apple. And behind all that, there's a little bit of spice. On the palate, you definitely feel the ABV. And that's why I am stepping this up after about a month or so with my buddies or my friends getting used to bourbon. Hopefully they're starting to get used to that ABV burn. It's always gonna be there, but I want to slowly get them used to the ABV before I actually introduce them to the barrel strength stuff. Everything that you're getting on the nose is also coming through on the palate, just the classic stuff, the caramel, the brown sugar, and the honey. And this coming in at $18 is a great value bourbon, especially for the ABV. It is slightly sharp, but it's definitely sweet and spicy. Bottle number two, we're sticking with the theme of value. Early times, bottle and bond. $21.99. And that $21.99 gets you a liter bottle. The mash bill on this is coming in at 79% corn, 11% rye, 10% malted barley. And the talking point on this could actually be selling of whiskey recipes. This was actually owned by Brown Foreman. Brown Foreman sold it to Sazerac in 2020. And then Sazerac is saying that they're not gonna mess with the mash bill, they're not gonna mess with the recipe. And there's some controversy out there as well they bought all of the stock. So all of these recent bottles that are now being produced by Sazerac still has the Barton 1792 distillate in it. Again, bottle and bond, aged four years. This is very sweet. Unlike the Evan Williams, we're getting really dark notes in here. Cherry, brown sugar, caramel, heavy sweetness. Pretty viscous, really good mouthfeel, cherry forward, and for the value for the one liter, $21, absolutely fantastic. Let me know in the comments down below what your top five beginner bourbons would be if you're gonna level up just a little bit more than just the basic bottles. I'd be interested to see what you guys would do 
And also like, subscribe, share, do all those things that YouTubers ask you to do. Trying to hit the 2000 subscriber mark before my one year anniversary. Help me make that happen. Well, actually, I can't make it happen. You guys have to make it happen. Hit that subscribe button. Bottle number three. Probably no surprise, bottle number three is gonna be Four Roses, a single barrel. This is now $44.99. We're jumping up in price a little bit. We have a high rye mash bill here. And Four Roses, as far as a distillery goes, this could be another conversation starter. This could be something that you can talk about forever. The mash bill here is 60% corn, 35% rye, and 5% malted barley. And they're using the V yeast. Aged anywhere from seven to nine years distilled by Four Roses Distillery. There's so much involved here with their 10 recipes, their five different types of yeast, their warehouses, which side of the warehouse it came from, what rick number, what tier number, and what position number. It's crazy. It has more of a subtlety on the nose. It's not as big and bold and sweet as this, and you're not getting as much ABV as you would on the Evan Williams. It's subdued. Unlike the sweetness of all of the others, you have more cinnamon and spice. A little bit of vanilla, a little bit of oak. Just so nice, well-rounded. The cinnamon spice, fantastic. $44, you are bumping up in price, but you're getting a really good product here. Moving right along, bottle number four, and this is one of the newer guys on the block. Wilderness Trail Bottled and Bond, $47.99. Mash bill of 64% corn, 24% rye. 12% malted barley. This is a sweet mash, and that could also be another conversation starter. Copper column distilled, distilled by Wilderness Trail, and that's in Danville, Kentucky. And the distillery was founded in 2012, so that should give you an idea of what I'm talking about when I say new kids on the block. And I don't necessarily know if this is unique, but what is interesting about these guys, and other distilleries might do this as well, they actually age, air dry their barrels for 18 months, and then they toast them, and then they char them. Fill them up with the distillate and let them age. And because it's bottled and bond, they're aging at least four years. Interesting on the nose, I get a dustiness, not like an old type of bourbon kind of dusty. This really does smell dusty. An attic, you've opened something, there's dust on the bottle. It has that kind of note to it. Either that or my glass is really dirty. It's not an off-putting note at all. It's actually really good. Sweet, cinnamon, brown sugar, cherry. And then on the back end, I get a nutty note, kind of a peanut shell. And maybe that is where I'm picking up on the, the dustiness. Maybe it's the crushed peanut shells. On the palate, spice forward, followed by that nutty note, cherry, brown sugar, caramel. This develops and unfolds and just goes and goes and goes. Represents rather well. If you haven't had it, I highly suggest it. Okay, moving on to bottle number five. This is the final bourbon of the flight before you actually introduce your specialty whiskey at the end. And if you haven't already, post in the comments down below what your five would be and then what your specialty bottle at the end would be as well. Fifth bottle, we have an age stated Knob Creek 12. This is the most expensive bottle in the list with the exception of my specialty bottle. This is coming in at $59.99. Mash bill, 77% corn, 13% rye, 10% malted barley. This is a Jim Beam product. And when people say Jim Beam product and they usually talk about the nuttiness on the nose, this definitely has that Jim Beam profile. Crushed peanut shells, almost borderline peanut butter. Distilled in Claremont, Kentucky. And then I'm not exactly sure here, so please let me know. This says distilled at Knob Creek Distillery but then I also see that Jim Beam Distillery. So I don't know if there is a difference here or not. If there is a difference, let me know what that difference is. If they actually do have a Knob Creek Distillery and a Jim Beam Distillery. Dusty peanut shells, small amounts of apple. Oh man, that is good. I get chocolate covered cherries in here. With that slight nutty note, this is fantastic. And with that, this brings me to the end of the five beginner bourbons. Now to finish off the night, Again, like I said at the beginning, you don't wanna just tell everybody, hey, that's it, have a great night, what'd you guys think? You wanna introduce them to something a little bit different. So my specialty, sixth bottle of the night, comes in a box. <laughs> and my specialty bourbon here is going to be the Blood Oath Pack number eight. So Blood Oath, this is their 2022 release. 
So what's special about this one and the talking point you can have is finished bourbons, finished casks. These are finished in Calvados casks. This is light, spicy, apple, and just like the Knob Creek, this is pretty low on the sweetness level, even though this is finished in an apple pear brandy. We have a blend of 14 and 11 year old bourbon, and then the eight year old bourbon, correct me if I'm wrong, is the one that's actually finished in the Calvados casks. This is bottled for the Lux Road Distillery. Even though this is finished in the Calvados casks, it does have a low amount of sweetness. And on the palate, you get a really nice soft apple pear finish. I have other finished whiskeys that are a little bit better than this, but it came in a box. It's pretty fancy and you can kind of get some conversations going. So there you have it. These are my final six whiskeys that I would be presenting in this flight with friends. Everybody have a good time. You'll talk about it, but the conversation should not be dominated by all of this information. You're getting together to share the whiskey and have a good time. The talking points in the education is kind of secondary based on the crowd and based upon what they want to do for the night. It's not all about what the host knows. It's all about presenting these whiskeys in such a way that you just have a great time and share it. So that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, share, comment down below. Give me a like, turn on that bell notification, share this with somebody in the whiskey world that might get enjoyment out of it. Leave some comments down below what your five would be plus your kicker whiskey at the end. And with all that, enjoy your journey. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.